to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Morning, Marilyn. You're the first one on. It's Friday. Welcome aboard, everyone. Yay, Friday. Not that it matters. I'm retired. Sort of. Kind of. <laughs> I still tend to look at a Monday through Friday week. Although sometimes if I don't do anything during the week, I'm like, yeah, I better work on the weekend. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <sighs> so, yeah, why well, you just made it for the first time this week. Well, I wasn't on on Tuesday because I was asked to babysit and it just didn't work out being able to... Uh, oh, Joe's Echo, no change, yay. Um, it didn't work out to babysit and um, do Facebook Live. It's just difficult to do with a toddler. Um, but I do want to thank uh, our granddaughter Sarah for sharing because she couldn't go to daycare because she had a cold and a runny nose and wasn't feeling well. Well, now um, my mother and I both have this sore throat, drippy nose. So excited. <laughs> I haven't had an upper respiratory illness in two years. And now that we have a small person in school, <laughs> we're all going to be exposed. So, yay, fun. Um, so, a couple housekeeping things tonight. And I'll, maybe I'll repeat that at the end. Uh, tonight, we have a special guest at 7 p.m. We're doing a special live, Facebook Live tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, for you on the West Coast, that'll be 4 p.m. Um, I'm a little down this morning because I did a West Coast interview last night that was a two-hour interview that started at 10 p.m. and finished at midnight. Oh, I don't like that West Coast, East Coast time shift thing. That's tough. Um, so we need germs to keep our microbiome in check. Thank you, Beth. There's, there's a silver lining to everything. <laughs> Actually, I don't feel that bad. It's just, you know, in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. when you're like, oh, I feel my throat starting to go. E -e 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 uh, so, yeah, 7 o'clock tonight. So that means supporters are going to be tomorrow evening at 7, and I will post that. Um, uh, Mary Bass, tell Brendan, Brandon not to forget my replacement for extra large diapers. Yeah, the little ones always share. So <laughs> um Okay, so tonight that, that's a, a special gig for us. And then I also wanted to, for those of you who have been using our New Zealand Deer Antler Velvet products, we've got new packaging. So, so I have the old stuff up here. So this is the old New Zealand Deer Velvet Oral Drops. This is the new Dr. Judy's Dental Health Formula. The formulation did not change, but the packaging changed. So we went from the old pictures to the caricature, uh, tried to make it a little bit more fun. Um, and we also changed up our packaging so that it's a little easier to tell things apart. Oh, these aren't in the boxes. Um, but you can see the old products, everything, one of these is the senior formula, this one, and this is the wellness formula. Well, you, it's hard to tell those apart. So now they're color-coded. So the stripe at the bottom is different for each product, and it's a little bit easier. There's a senior formula, a wellness formula. I don't know which way to go with the camera. It's like working in a mirror, and the dental health formula, and they have different color codes uh, along the bottom, the, the little bands. So a little bit easier um, when you're looking at something sitting on a shelf in a pet store or uh, online. You can tell things apart a little bit better. Ugh. Okay, get all that out of my way. Um, so if you get products in the mail, um, 
uh, and they look a little different. The products have not changed, but the um, packaging is different. So we can thank Hugh for that. He worked with somebody overseas with a group called Fiverr. Um, you can hire people online to do graphics and stuff. And uh, Hugh is our resident artist, so he um, worked to uh, to get those done for us. Joyce, you're a bit too busy to order anything at this time. Well, and anything you order, you got to move. So uh, Joyce is moving from Virginia down to Myrtle Beach, another migrant heading south. Uh, and I just found out my best childhood friend... Um, sent me a birthday message which is coming up next week and her birthday was last week and uh, just found out she's moving to North Carolina as well from New Jersey so I'm really excited uh, she has three daughters one of them moved here so she's settling down here which is very very cool um, as Teresa says I always write senior with a sharpie on the senior bottle I know there we, when we did the original packaging we weren't I don't know. It, it was very early on in the thing, and we wanted consistency, but we were a little too consistent. They were hard to tell apart. <laughs> uh, you're going to hear barking because he was working on making breakfast. That's Gabby uh, voicing her pleasure uh, about the fact that it's one of her two favorite times of the day. All right, so supporters um, and tonight. And uh, another thing, I was sent this book, Overcoming Your Child's Fear of Dogs, written by Stephanie Cohen. Uh, licensed uh, clinical social worker. Um, really good book. And if you have a child who's afraid of dogs, she wrote this because her daughter was afraid of dogs. Uh, if you have a child who's afraid of dogs or know someone who has a child who's afraid of dogs, this book is can be uh, really, really helpful. Um, it has a lot of exercises and things that you can do to help. Um, and I have found in the past, uh, the label on the bottles is different. Um, what I found in the past is our dogs have been so good with children that um, uh, they've been really good at helping children who were fearful of dogs uh, because our guys are really, really good. Um, and I have to say, with Sarah, we're trying to teach her how to pat, pat, pat the dogs nicely and pat, pat, pat the kitties nicely. Uh, and she will do pat, 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 but what she wants to do is grab and pull. Um, and that can be problematic. Our dogs are very good about it. Our cats are very good about it. But an animal that wasn't uh, good about that could turn around and snap because they're getting pinched. So, um, so uh, you know, if you if you have if you're working with children to overcome fear, Stephanie Cohen, overcoming your child's fear of dogs, really good. Um, Cocker Spaniel will guard the kids. Your English is a tough lady. Uh, Cockers are very um, protective of their families. There's a lot of breeds that are very protective of the... Uh, your dog just left to see who's upstairs. <laughs> yeah, well, they're eating now, so you can tell the difference. Um, okay, so let's talk about what I actually wanted to talk about today. I have gotten multiple messages and emails this week from people saying that they can't get their... Um, their uh, dogs or cats to lose weight and they're very frustrated one person said that uh i think it was in the maltese group said that their dog their maltese was like 17 pounds and they asked the vet tech uh who was drawing blood to see if to, to check the thyroid uh to see if that was why the dog could not lose weight and the vet tech refused to ask the vet to add the thyroid on now first of all why is the vet tech making the medical decisions in the practice that's totally ridiculous um, but the person uh, finally did went somewhere else and got a thyroid test done, and yes, the dog had low thyroid. Huh, shocking. So here's the thing. Um, uh, obesity is an endocrine disease, and I've written about this in my books and in my blogs. Uh, it's actually an endocrine disease, and fat secretes hormones that cause inflammation in the body and promotes uh, you know, more obesity, basically. Um, so when we look at endocrine problems, we have to look at the entire endocrine system together. So that's going to include the pituitary gland, the adrenal glands, the thyroid gland, the pancreas, which is the secreting gland. And we have to look at all of those things together because if we don't, we're, we're missing the whole picture. Um, 
Obesity is rampant. Over 50% of the dogs in the US are obese. I don't know if it's as big a problem in other countries as it is here. Uh, I, we have an obesity epidemic in humans in this country. We're used to eating very high fat, high starch, high processed foods in this country. Um, and we do the same thing with our pets. So I have found that if you are trying to get your pet to lose weight while you're feeding a high fat, high starch meal, it's going to be almost impossible. So almost all the people that sent me messages um, said, well, I've cut back the food, I've cut back the food, I've cut back the food. One person had a dog that was over 100 pounds and they were feeding six ounces of raw meat a day. So raw food, but six ounces a day to a dog who weighs over 100 pounds. Their complaint is that the dog is stealing food, the dog is becoming aggressive. Well, of course he is, he's starving. Six ounces of food is not going to satisfy a 100 pound dog. You're not supplying enough vitamins and minerals for that animal to even have all of his body systems work correctly. So you cannot starve them to death. You can't take what you're, I mean, you can certainly cut calories to start with by if you're, especially if you're overfeeding. Uh, so you wanna look at what you're feeding and get down to the appropriate amount. And maybe you need to count calories like you would for a person and keep a journal. It's amazing how many people are handing out treats and don't include the treats as part of the calories that are going into the animal. Or you're feeding the same amount of food in the bowl, but now you're adding healthy toppers, you're adding eggs, you're adding sardines, you're adding other home prepared food that is great but you didn't subtract the other calories out. So you have to think about that. But what happens when you just keep cutting back, cutting back, cutting back, like this, this big 100 pound dog who actually was gaining weight on the six ounces of food, <laughs> uh, the problem is that when you cut back and cut back and cut back, the metabolism stays in check with that. So the metabolism went from here to here to here to here. And the report was the dog hates to exercise. The dog never moves. The dog doesn't go anywhere or do anything. Well, of course not. His metabolism has been completely shut down. So if we're trying to make them lose weight, we've got to do a couple of things. We've got to decrease the fats in the diet. We have to decrease the starchy carbs in the diet because our pets don't process those starchy carbs very well at all, particularly cats. That's why cats who are fed dry kibble most of the time end up being obese and quite often end up being diabetic because the pancreas is part of that endocrine system. We're screwing with the endocrine system with the obesity and the carbs are not being broken down. They're just being, though they're being broken down to sugars and they're being stored as fats in the body. So one, we have to change the diet. We've got to get away from those starchy carbs. So nine times out of 10, if you take an animal who is on a dry kibble or a high starch diet, there's a lot of those uh, shipped to your home meals right now that are very high in starches and carbs. They're high in potatoes, they're high in peas, lentils, legumes. If you just get those out of the diet and put them on something that is a protein, moderate fat, and non-starchy vegetable matter, so dark leafy greens, the cruciferous vegetables, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, asparagus, green beans, kale, collards, dandelion greens, those kinds of things. Very low calorie, but takes a lot of work for the body to digest and process those. So how do you count calories for dogs? You gotta figure out the calorie count on your package of food and every treat that you're putting in and add them up. And the pet food industry does not make it easy because they tell you uh, calories per kilogram of food. So then you've got to figure out, well, how much is that per ounce? So you got to go from metric to, uh, yeah, it's, it's a mess. Um, <laughs> if you're not a math uh, fan, it's not easy to do. Um, so a lot of times just switching, getting away from those carbs and getting on something. One of my favorite ways to do it is uh, go to something like uh, the Dr. Harvey's base mixes, the Paradigm or the Raw Vibrance, because those are very low starch foods. The Paradigm was initially made to be closer to keto, so very low starch. Then you add your own meats. Well, you start with very low fat meats and you add the oil that is needed. So 
when we switch to something like that, and when you figure out how much to feed, you're reading the package directions, feed for the weight that you want them to be. Don't feed a 110 pound dog that is supposed to be 80 pounds. Don't feed him enough food for 110. Feed him for the 80 that you want him to be. You might even wanna feed him for 75 so that we can get the weight to come down. Then once the weight comes down, then we figure out what we need to maintain them. So sometimes just that is enough for them to automatically start losing weight. I'll never forget, there was a, a Cavalier in our um, Cavalier group and the owner kept complaining that the dog was really overweight, really overweight, really overweight. <clears throat> and she just basically kept switching from one kibble to another and she used the weight reducing formulas of kibble. And I kept saying, this is not going to work. Your dog is not going to, and the dog didn't lose weight. And she kept complaining that the dog wouldn't lose weight, but she refused to, uh, do home cooked meals. She refused to switch to a base mix and make her own meat. She refused to do something different. She kept making all these lateral moves, more kibble, more kibble, more kibble. And then she kept cutting back the portions, cutting back the portions, and the metabolism got slower and slower. The dog never lost the weight. The dog eventually became diabetic, lost its eyesight because of the diabetes. And it was just a cascade of problems that occurred because the person was not willing to make that diet change that actually was going to solve the problem. So that's the first thing, we've gotta switch the diet. Now, this 100 pound Labrador that I was talking about, already on a raw food, not getting starches in its diet, still gaining weight, but they've got it down to six ounces of food a day. Well now, we've shut down the metabolism. You can't do that. This dog is getting slower and slower and slower. His body is barely ticking. So of course he's not burning up any calories, except for the fact that he's getting aggressive and he's mad because he's not getting any food. So I actually said to them, we have to increase this dog's food. But what we need to do is add something that is going to make the body work. That's those non-starchy, fibrous vegetable matter. So you add those in. And they had gotten down to feeding this dog once a day. I said, no, he's got to eat three to four times a day. This is the same thing we see in people. You eat less, you eat less, you eat less, you count your calories, you eat less, you eat less, you eat less, and your metabolism goes down, 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 and then you can't lose any weight. What you need to do, increase what you're eating, increase the metabolism, get things revved up. Now, if you have a pet that's been chronically overweight, you also wanna check those endocrine systems, check the thyroid levels, see where the blood sugar is, see where the insulin levels are, uh, make sure they don't have Cushing's disease, see what the adrenal glands are doing. We need to know all that information because if the dog has hypothyroidism and you're not treating that, good luck in your weight loss journey, it is not going to happen. If they have Cushing's disease, they may not necessarily be obese, they may just have that weak abdominal musculature that is making them pot-bellied, so you're thinking, wow, they're really obese, when in reality, they're losing muscle mass along their top line and they're just getting a pot belly. So, a lot of stuff. <laughs> Teresa Carpenter weighs her food as well as her dog's food scale goes everywhere. Yeah, we went on vacation, she brought her food scale, um, but it's worked really well for her. Uh, but she's not starving herself to death. She's looking at the portions and making sure that they're appropriate for what her body needs. <clears throat> so this obese 100 pound dog, I said, okay, I want you to feed this dog a cup of these fibrous vegetables at least three to four times a day. Take your meat portions and split those up. And six ounces is not enough for that dog. And what we need to do is step up his metabolism. I think he had already been tested and was not hypothyroid. Um, this goes back to, in my first book, The Needles to Natural, there's a story in there about Scanlon, who was a seeing eye dog, a black lab, who went from 65 pounds to 130 in two, <clears throat> in two years. And uh, the journey that we went through to get that dog, and he couldn't work anymore because he couldn't fit in his harness. His seeing eye harness didn't fit. Seeing eye wanted to take the dog back because he was so obese. They considered it cruelty, but of course, what did they want them to feed? They wanted them to feed a uh, one of the big brands, weight-reducing dry kibble. And I said, that's not going to work. Didn't work. Um, so we changed the dog over to a raw food diet. Honey, the water guys are here. Okay, um, sorry, I'm looking out the front window. Uh, uh, so we switched that dog over to a raw diet 
and we didn't end up having to use the base mix. We also got him moving. And for these dogs and cats that are obese, getting them moving can be difficult because they don't want to move. They don't have the energy, their joints hurt. It's very difficult. For that guy in the book, we started out with trying to get to the end of the driveway and it was a short driveway. He couldn't get to the end of the driveway. By the time we were done with him, he was walking 30 miles a week and it took a lot of slow buildup to get that dog moving. So, uh, yeah, that was the dog that I brought home. Uh, the owner said, I can't walk the dog and I can't, he tried for months to get the dog to lose weight and he just wasn't losing any weight. And, uh, I said, well, if that was, if that dog was living in my house, he'd lose weight. I can guarantee it. And the guy looked at me and said, would you do that dog? Would you take him home? Would, would you get him to lose the weight? Now, of course, the dog needed to go from 130 down to 65, and he thought I was going to do that in like three weeks. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, we had the dog for three months, got him down to about 95, and then sent him back home and uh, followed him pretty closely. And then the owners were able to, to, to keep things moving. So, um, okay. So if you're struggling with weight loss, you're going to have to change the diet. You, you're going, going to have to increase the metabolism and you need to check your endocrine panels to make sure that you're not overlooking something. This goes for cats as well as dogs. Cats don't really become hypothyroid. They don't have Cushing's disease per se. Um, so it's a little bit different for them. For cats, 99% of it is diet um, and also moving around. Our cats are the biggest slugs in the world. They spend 22 hours a day sleeping. Uh, they run around in the middle of the night, I hear them. They're nocturnal. Okay. Okay, uh, so don't forget, 7 p.m. tonight, we have a special guest. We're going to do an interview. Um, so tune in for that. And then um, uh, we'll do supporters tomorrow, so I will post that. I haven't figured out what we're talking about yet. I'll figure it out as we go. It's supposed to be 95 here today. i got to get out to the farm and pick some stuff in the garden before it gets that hot. So everybody have a wonderful day. Oh, music. Yeah, that thing. Do, 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 do. There we go. And uh, yes, thank you, Gwen, for uh, um, being on yesterday. And the Project Sud stuff, I'm excited. I actually went to the office after her uh, live yesterday and picked up some bars of soap. I'm going to try them out. So. Uh, okay. Everybody have a great day. Don't forget this book, Overcoming Your Child's Fear of Dogs, Stephanie Cohen. If you have children who are afraid of dogs, really important that our children like animals.